the hood champion boxing and sports. And boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. So Adrian Broner, back in the ring very soon, matter of fact. And uh, we'll be getting back in the ring in, what, February? We're all excited to see him back. A.B. But this is the problem, man. You know, BLK Prime signed Broner to a multi-million uh, three-fight contract. So the three-fight deal, although there aren't a lot of specifics on that deal, but I would like to think the type of money he's making is probably all contingent on him winning fights. Now, one thing we do know, and this is what Adrian Broner said, he gets to pick his own opponents. Um, he doesn't have to get in the ring with killers. Or as he worded it, the way Showtime put it to him, Showtime wanted him to fight Godzilla um, in order to make the type of money Broner wanted. But but this is the real concern. And we gotta be uh we gotta be honest here. If you look at the image with Adrian Broner with that jacket and that tight t-shirt where he's trying to cover up his midsection, and we can understand Broner Broner's been boxing for a while. He understands what, what it's like to be a, a public figure, to be you know, and he is what it is, he's a superstar. He knows how the media will take pictures of him and paparazzis and sell it to TMZ and everyone else and they'll create a story and run with it because everyone knows who Adrian Broner is and people like drama. So he tried to conceal the actual, just, just how out of shape he was. But this is the thing that we need to be paying attention to and this is something that I'm sure BLK Prime is paying attention to as well. Adrian Broner is known for, for getting up to over 200 pounds, all right? Now, in this picture, I don't know how much he weighs, but this is the biggest we've ever seen him look in any photo. So I'm going to assume Adrian Broner is probably, at the time this photo was taken, is probably over 200 pounds. Now, remember, uh, Bud Crawford fought in November, December, early December, right? Yeah, Bud Crawford fought early December. That's when this photo was taken. Now, let's timeline this. Broner's supposed to fight in February. Okay? So you got these, him weighing but what could be over 200 pounds. Or let's just say 200, right? 200 pounds, December. Then January, February. So this man has le about, let's just say he has about 70 days to drop from 200 pounds down to 140, 144, whatever the hell weight that he's fighting red catch at. Okay, because I'm not going to say he's fighting at 140. We know it's not 147, but we know Adrian Broner, I, I am, he's known for coming in at whatever weight that he feels comfortable. Now, for those of you who are saying, ah, oh, man, you, you know, you're kind of taking this and trying to create your own narrative, you're trying to be negative. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Look, Adrian Broner has struggled with weight for a long, long time. And whenever he's had to return from a long absence, remember, he he had returned back in 2001 when he faced, uh, what's the guy's name, uh, Santiago? He had returned from a 25-month layoff. Okay? So he, he returned and he had an issue with weight on the scales, man. Right? This, this, isn't, this isn't something that I'm making up. He had absolutely no chance of making 140. And he knew that. And he came in the ring that way. So you can't, you can't campaign a campaign right at 140 and try to boil down from 200 pounds in like 65, 70 days. That's 60 pounds, man. Now, those of you who follow the channel know, I just did a video on the, the, the weight bullies and people cutting weight. In this case, Broner's not trying to be a weight bully. This is just a situation of his 5'6 frame carrying 200 plus pounds and trying to melt that off in an unreasonable, unrealistic amount of time. So for him to get in that ring, and to have the support of BLK Prime, 
I just don't think it's quite there. I don't think it's going to be quite there. Because just how... Now, okay, two things we need to be honest about. How... I'm missing me up. Just how competitive can Adrian Broner be coming off what this looks like it could be? A 60-pound plus weight loss. And so basically it's a pound a day for the most part, right? How the hell is he going to be competitive? He has to be drained. He would have to be drained, right? I just did a video on guys cutting, you know, athletes cutting on un, 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 unrealistic amounts of weight in a five-day period, 30 pounds, 20 pounds. Some guys cutting 16 pounds in a day, 18 pounds in a day. I'm not making these numbers up. You go out there and Google it. This is real stuff that happens when it comes to combat sports, and boxing, and MMA. Weight, let me tell you, the weight cut is real because it's a lot of water weight. And for people to get there, they got to put their body into overdrive to where they're releasing a lot of water. And then once they get to that point to where it's like the body can't release any more water, that's when it goes to the extreme measures, the hot baths, the saunas, going in there in cycles, just releasing whatever little bit of fluid you have. And you you just, whatever fluid you can get out your body because your body's composed of water, I think it's like 65%. And then they can't replenish it. So it's little ice chips or no water at all, no food at all. And then you have these guys who end up taking diuretics at the last minute because they have to make sure whatever little bit of water weight's there, they can get that out, get that out the system. And I have a feeling Adrian Broner is going to go into this fight not being, I don't even want to say 60%. And, and, and let's be totally honest. This is the second point I want to make. Adrian Broner at 100%, I'm talking about over like the last five year, 100%, not the Adrian Broner of like the first 20 fights, 100%. The guy had his hair brushed all the time. That was a special, that was a special athlete. I'm talking about the Adrian Broner after Madonna. That Adrian Broner's 100% is like 50% of the Adrian Broner in the first like 20 fights. Okay, now that's a fact. So this Adrian Broner, if we're saying he's at 100%, that means he's really probably 50% of when he was really dominating the lighter weights and bubbling up to 140 and getting in there and winning uh, the belt against Malinaji at 147, right? That Broner, let me tell you, he will not beat Ivan Redcatch. See, this is the other, people keep looking and saying, oh, Ivan Redcatch can't fight. He got in there with... Um, Regis Prograve, and, you know, he faked the body shot. Oh, uh, no, he faked the uh, the low blow and all that. Look, 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 listen. I get it. But now you're sitting here saying that Adrian Brown and Regis Prograve are on the same level. You see, Ivan Redcatch can fight. He can fight. But he got in over his head with that sparring with Tank Davis, which you know the video's been circulating. And, you know... He's not a guy who's going to quit. But Tank Davis, he's a special fighter. We all know that. He got into a Regis program, you know, and he, he was trying to handle this up, but Regis program is another special fighter. He just, Regis program just hasn't had the opportunities like some of these other guys. Regis program is fast and he hits hard. Okay, and, he ha and he's durable. But Adrian Broner, it's a lot of questions, a lot of question marks around Adrian Broner. And for me, when I saw the opponent that they selected, I said, this is a problem. This really is a problem. Ivan Redcatch? <sighs> Yo, I'm telling you, Redcatch isn't just going to lay down. He's not just going to lay down. He's going to fight. And he doesn't get tired. Okay? And I don't think Broner, coming off of a uh, vicious weight loss, it's going to be able to handle what Ivan Redcatch is bringing to him. I just don't. I don't see it happening. It, Broner should win, but I just don't see it happening, man. Yeah, that's, that's a huge undertaking to come out there and be weight drained. So much weight in a short period of time. 
So now when you look at it, right, what happens if Adrian Broner doesn't win? Well, I think he just goes into his next fight, right? Because if Adrian Broner was to lose, I think BLK Prime, um, they may be a little disappointed, but I, I don't, you see, I don't know if we would consider that a flop, you know, because I have my own de definition of what a flop is. But then BLK Prime has their own definition as well. So the thing is, if the fly and the wall could talk, then we'd be better informed on just how BLK Prime really feel about Terrence Crawford and his outing and the questionable pay-per-view sales and the live gate and the whole purse and everything for Terrence Crawford. But let's just say BLK Prime was felt that it was a success, which is what they're saying. But let's say it, was, it really felt it was a success. I can tell you right now, Adrian Broder fighting, whether he wins or he loses, Adrian Broder should sell more pay-per-view than, than uh, Terrence Crawford. That's just a fact. Now, anybody out there disagree with me, post it in the comments. But you can't tell me that Terrence Crawford is going to sell more pay-per-view than Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner loses, people are going to still watch him. If he wins, people are definitely going to watch him. But I think Adrian Broner will get through his three-fight deal. But I know for a fact right now, BLK Prime is, is feeling a little uneasy because they would like for Broner to come out and win. Anyone who they sign to a contract to get on their, to, to come and fight on their platform, they, could, they would like for those guys to win. That's like Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua. You know, Anthony Joshua is the real deal. Huge pay-per-view star. You know, Big money, huge contracts with the zone. It's no different with BLK Prime. Okay, yeah, there's levels to it, but they're doing the same thing. But look what happened when AJ lost. Man started losing money. The zone got uncomfortable. Eddie Hearn ready to drink rat poison. So the same thing with BLK Prime. They need, and what I'm saying is this. You need the fighters to win. And Adrian Broner needs to win. Yeah, people are going to watch him no matter what. BLK Prime will probably make money no matter what. But they're not here to just make a couple million when they can make 50 million if Adrian Broner does what he's supposed to do in the ring. So, so my concern, which is aside from any of the stuff we've uh, recently discussed, right? My concern is Adrian Broner and his health Right now, the kind of weight he has and what he's going to put his body through to try to get down to the weight that he's going to be fighting uh, that's contracted to fight Red Catch. I'm very concerned. But I'm going to call it now, and we'll, we'll revisit this video after he fights. I, I truly believe Adrian Broner will come in to fight over the contracted weight, and he'll pay, I don't know, hundred thousand dollars per pound that he's over and not care about it that way he doesn't have to kill himself to get all the way down to the contracted weight now on a more positive note i do believe adrian broner once he gets down within that 140 something pound window going forward he's going to stay in shape and he probably won't let his weight balloon up past 160 and that's a good thing because one thing I will say about Adrian Broner, and I think you all will agree, Adrian Broner likes money. And he knows what it is to, to, to basically lose everything. Money, materialistic things, family. I mean, that's a horrible feeling. Friends, um, you know, fans. And that, that takes its toll on a person like Adrian Broner, who's really about his image, about his self-esteem. And, you know, he wants to be that guy. Um, and when he, obviously he wasn't, that bothered him. So for him to be back in a position where he can become that guy again, I, I think once he gets through this kind of tumultuous spot in his career of having to cut so much weight and get ready for a fight against a guy like Red Catch, people think he's going to beat, but deep down Broner knows Red Catch is, is, a, is, a, is a tough fight. I think once he gets beyond this, I think he'll be on cruise control. And um, I'm not saying we'll get the old AB, but I think we'll get a a more mature, more refined product that we can accept. But my concern for him, and I'm telling you right now, is his health. I, I, I just don't like seeing these guys having to cut so much weight. Like, for those of you who have been following the channel, know, man, I, you know, I'm retired military. And, you know, we have fit tests, you know, in the Air Force. Um, 
And I can remember when I was younger, I never ever prepared for a fit test because I was always in shape, always in the gym lifting weights, always running. I was in a boxing gym. So I was in shape year round, man. But as you start to get older, you know, all of a sudden I noticed like, um, damn, you know, your you, you weight keeps going up. All of a sudden I'm from 185 to, to 205, but it doesn't look bad because I didn't have no fat on me. Get to 205 lifting weights. But then I'm in and out the boxing gym because when I used to go box, I used to drop so much weight, you know, sparring and training. It used to bother me because I like, you know, I like to have my T-shirts to fit me tight. Got your traps looking good, your shoulders, your triceps. You know, I used to like looking swole, but then I didn't like feeling so tight. I like my, my hands being loose, being fast. I like feeling like a boxer. So I used to flip-flop a lot. But I realized in doing that, and, you know, especially cutting out a lot of the cardio, all of a sudden, getting older, you know, you notice you little thing with weight, man, gaining a little weight and stuff like that. But anyway, fast forward to like five years before I retired, you know, walking around at 245. And I'm like, shit, this ain't 185. How the hell did I get to 245? It's just as you get older, the metabolism slows down. It's hard to stay in that kind of shape unless you just have genetics. And I can remember getting ready for fit tests where I'd be weighing like 245 and I would cut down to 201. Um, and I would start off the first couple of days, you know, walking for like an hour. The, the, the next five, four or five days, I would walk, then jog a certain distance till my shins started getting sore and I would walk. But I would, I, I would walk for about, I would do it for about an hour. So it was like a combination of walking, jogging in place, uh, walking, jogging, jogging in place, then, you know, trying to jog and jog in place. But I would make sure I didn't stop moving. And after about two weeks in, I'd be able to get a, you know, a, a steady jog. And shit, by a, month, by a month, I'd be all out jogging. And after about a month and a half in, I'd be all out like I used to run, like a sprint. And by a month, about about a month of training, I'd say about 45 days into training, I would have gone from 240 down to about 207, you know. And people used to wonder how I did it. But, of course, I knew how to cut weight, you know. I used to train, um, and, and, and I would ease up on the weight lifting. i find myself in a boxing, but I used to run a lot of hills. And when I used to run those hills, let me tell you, that if you, have, if you want to lose weight, tweak your diet, tweak your diet a little bit, right, and run hills. And I'm not talking about for 10 minutes. I'm talking about, I used to run them hills, man, like an hour and a half. Like, it'd be like 45 minutes up. And then I'd be like, okay, then I would turn, and then I would start coming back down. And there'd be some straightaways too, but it was pretty much all uphill that first 45 minutes. And then I, but I wouldn't stop moving. I would jog in place when it got tough. Breathe through my nose, blow out my mouth, and then I would come back. And talking about, man, I used to do that, man. I used to get... I used to get my weight down to 185 from like 240. So within like a 90-day period, I used to do that. And then I go for my fit test, and they they just couldn't understand it. I remember, you know, guys I worked around and, you know, leadership, they used to all say, you know, hey, they were coming by my last name. They're like, how the hell do you do that? And I'm like, just discipline. Because one place I was stationed when I was in Japan, in Japan for six years, and I remember, you know, They'd have a turnover, but sometimes you get some people in place three, four years, and every year they used to see me do that because they notice my face starting to get slim and everything. They're like, oh, you're getting ready for your fit test. I'm like, yeah. And when I go in there, I mean, you know, it's like it was just in shape. No fat on me. Your clothes fit differently. People see you, you know, making jokes. Oh, man, Hollywood. They used to call me Hollywood because I, the way I used to cut weight and shit. But what I'm saying is it's a little different when you had to cut 60 pounds um, in a 60-day period for a fight and uh, and to go in and fight for 12 hard rounds. Let me tell you, your legs, everything starts to bother you, man. You know, your body starts shaking and trembling, man. So I hope he, he does it the right way. But I know I took up a lot of time with that story, but I'm just telling you, I've cut weight. And... Um, I've cut weight for fights. I used to weigh 200 and cut down to 160, you know, for fights. Um, and I wasn't a fat 200, was, you know, lifting a lot of weights. And, you know, training, but I, when we started dieting, it was a lot, a lot of running and damn tuna fish sandwiches, I'll tell you that. 
two tuna fish sandwiches a day and rice cakes and and running twice a day, you know, I mean, and I, I didn't run for miles, I ran for time. So I'd run for like an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes, and I knew there was a certain, a certain distance I wanted to travel. But um, I never worried about it in miles. I'd say, okay, if I'm gonna run from here, I'm gonna run all the way out to this landmark and then all the way back. And sometimes running back, I'd see somewhere else, I feel good, I'm like, okay, it's an hour and a half already, I still feel strong, boom. I push another 30 minutes, but but that takes a certain kind of discipline, man, that, you know, I had, and there are a lot of, there, there, there are a lot of people who have that, the elites have it, and I'm not saying, I wasn't a professional athlete, I'm just a guy that just had discipline, and, you know, Mike Tyson said it best, is discipline is doing something you don't like, like you love it, and, and I used to actually enjoy it somewhat, but, I, but, but I definitely didn't love it, but I knew I had to do it, and, and, and I was committed. And with Adrian Broner doing something like that in such a short period of time, I just, coming off the holidays, come on, man. I just, I'm just worried about, about him. But that being said, good luck to AB, and good luck to anyone out there who has a cut weight, because a lot of people die trying to lose that weight. They start getting... The last, the last, you know, the the last couple couple hours, them diuretics and all that other crap, man. And I remember back in the day, it was Zinedrine. People were taking that goddamn Zinedrine. Then there was another pill that came after that. I don't remember that, but during that time, during my era, I remember Zinedrine was a big one. Oxycut, I think, was another one. I never took that, but I had taken Zinedrine before. And um, I mean, you know, you you lose the water weight, you may lose a little bit of fat, but it, but once you eat a goddamn a damn sandwich, that shit comes right back on you. So, I mean, it's not you know, permanent weight loss. It's something temporary, but you just have to stay disciplined. So, good luck to A.B., BLK Prime. We're going to see what happens going into this fight. If he loses, we'll see what happens going forward. But I'm rooting for him. I think everybody deserves a second chance. But I'm rooting for him. But you got to have discipline. Coming down from 200-plus pounds to 140, 144, whatever the hell weight he's going to fight at. That's a lot of weight, 60-something pounds in a 60, 75-day period, 80-day period. That, that's a lot of weight. But that being said, y'all keep cool. Shout out to the veterans, and I'm in the breeze.